Alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Uh, welcome to another session of our series entitled How to Perform the Prayers and How to Perform Them Correctly based on the Quran and the, the Sunnah with the understanding of the Prophet and his companions, which is very crucial because this is why we have a lot of people praying, but they're innovating. They're not, or they're praying and not praying properly because instead of them learning Islam based on the Quran and the authentic hadiths, <clears throat> and instead of them learning with the understanding of the companions, they're learning based on fatwa online websites or opinions from people that they worship other than Allah. And this is sad. So let me ask this question before I move on to today, because today what I'm going to speak about are the things. It's going to be shocking. Things that you are allowed to do when praying. First of all, who can answer this question? Oh, thank you, Brother Musa and Mamina and Jamila. Mashallah. Now I'm getting responses from YouTube. They can see the typing and hear me. Okay, Mashallah. Thank you. That means um, it's working. I got the, everything set up right. You know, I I just woke up, so I apologize. You know, oh, I don't have my coffee. Without my coffee, I just can't function right. You know, but anyway, let's get back to this question here, Brother Musa. I'm glad to see you here. Tell me, Brother Musa, if if you're making salat, Brother Musa, and somebody walks in front of you. Is your prayer invalidated with or without a sutra? Listen to the, excuse me, listen to the question carefully. If you are praying and someone walks in front of you, whether you have a sutra or not, is your salat broken? Whether that person's a woman, a man, a dog, a donkey, a gin, or anything else. Is your prayer broken, Brother Musa? Let's give him a chance to answer. Okay, Brother Musa said, your prayer is not bro broken. What do you guys think about his answer? A woman walks in front of you or a man walks in front of you or a dog or a donkey or anything, a gin, a fallen angel, whatever y'all make up in y'all minds. Is your prayer broken? My well, answer is correct. His answer is correct. Okay, nobody disagrees. Good job. Good job. It is not broken. And can somebody give me some evidence? I gave y'all about 10 hadiths yesterday. 10 hadiths to prove that. Can somebody give the Dalil? Because as you guys know, in this day and era, there are young men still telling you that if a woman walks in front of you, your prayer is broken. Can somebody give me at least one hadith to prove that? It's not true. And you guys are going to have to remember these hadiths because I'm telling y'all we're replaced with fatwa. And y'all see how fatwa is replacing us, the Sunnah. You guys don't remember, remember anything. You better ask Allah. When all of you make dua, ask Allah to keep your memory and your, your, your memory strong. To keep your, your memory of his religion strong in your brain. To not allow you to forget things that you need to remember about this religion. Nobody got a dialio, even though I gave y'all about 10 or 15 hadiths yesterday. Abu, Abu Hatim says um, it proves that um, it is it proves that it is permissible to pass in front of a person who is praying, but without a sutra. And this lies a clear proof that the warning concerns passing in front of one who is praying refers only to one who is praying towards the sutra and does not refer to one who does not have a sutra. Okay, is that Dalil she gave or is that a fatwa? Y'all know the difference? A Dalil is a hadith that says something. What you just read is a fatwa or an explanation. 
Now, with that little fatwa you read, look above it and look at the hadiths. The hadiths are the dal stop mumbling and listen. The hadiths are the dalil. So I want you to look at your what you copied. What you copied was fatwa, explanation. But what did that person base his explanation on? What happened with the companions that gave him the, 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 the grounds to say what he said? Look above all that for a hadith. I gave you about 10. Anybody else? You can use your, since you guys don't know the difference between a hadith and a fatwa, you can use your PowerPoint. Use your PowerPoint. Somebody give me a hadith that proves that if a woman, a dog, or a donkey, or a jinn, or anything else walks in front of you with or without a sutra, your prayer is not invalidated. I want a hadith, not a fatwa, not an explanation. This is what the Daya, like myself, those of us who are protectors of the Sunnah, boy, this, this is a scary thing. Boy, when we see these hadiths coming true, how people can remember fatwa, but they don't remember the hadiths. It's just sad, it's scary, man. It is so scary. That's gonna be y'all's homework. Y'all uh, <clears throat> excuse me? No. Yeah, I said I have one um, hadith. Um, I, I'm trying to pronounce it properly. Busa ibn Said says that Zaid ibn Khalid sent him to Abu Juham to ask him what he had heard from the Prophet concerning passing in front of someone who was praying. He said that the Messenger of Allah said if one knew the sin of passing in front of one who is praying, he would rather wait 40 years than to pass in front of him. This is related by the group. Okay, that's a hadith, but does that hadith prove that if a person walks in front of you, your prayer is not broken? That hadith is saying, it sounds like it's saying that if the person walks in front of you, it is broken. Y'all got to look at the word and get past the people. Forget the people's names. Get to the, the, the meaning of the hadith. When y'all read these hadiths, you ain't going to forget all that Arabic name. That's the, that's the hard work done easy for us. All you need to remember is or know is the meaning and the source. The source of that hadith, that means the book is from Bukhari Muslim and the, and the meaning. Forget about who said it because that's how y'all get lost trying to remember how to pronounce those Arabic names. Okay, again, and I'm going to make that y'all's homework assignment because y'all got to learn how to understand these hadiths, man. I want you guys to give me for your homework the dalil, the proof that if a person or anything walks in front of you, with or without a sutra, your prayer is not broken. We know that it's disliked. I want the dalil. If it's haram, it's going to say it's haram. It's not going to say if you knew. That means it's disliked. Okay? I gave y'all so many hadiths. That was my whole class yesterday. I dropped the mic on all those people that say opposite. Y'all weren't paying attention. That's your homework for tomorrow. All right. Y'all deal with that. What? I have one in Sabrina. Let me hear it. Forget the people who said it. If you since y'all can't remember nothing. Let's hear it. Um, it's Sabrina. Do you remember? Sabrina, um, go ahead. Um oh, this is my baby is Sabrina. She now listen to her. The children memorized the hadith. Sabrina helped them out. Go ahead, baby. Um, this one time. The prophet was praying and Khadijah had her foot in front of him. And he and when he bat when he did his uh sujood, he pushed her foot away and she was in her uh period. Okay, y'all hear that's Dalil. 
she got the name wrong. She said Khadijah's Aisha, Aisha radiallahu anhu. But there's also another one with Um Salama too. Good job, Sabrina. That's Galil. The simp that's one hadith I gave y'all. The simple fact that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed his night prayer, Aisha radiallahu anhu was on her menses laying in front of him, in front of him, in front of him, on her menses. And he would touch her leg. That's how close she was. That's Dalil that oh, anybody in front of you don't break it. And I gave more. Thank you, Sabrina. I gave more Hadith. You got one, uh, Geechee, go ahead. What she quoted to you was, and she did that from her memory. That's the children memorize. Alhamdulillah. You guys can't remember. What you got, Geechee? <laughs> now for the moment. Huh? You need to have Sully feel, answer these questions. I'm still looking through my notes. Hold on. <laughs> See, you have Sully participate in these classes because the kids remember. They do. They remember. They soak it up. So that's y'all's homework for tomorrow for this class. While I go into the next one. lecture, y'all going to have to give me some hadiths. Is that somebody else talking in here? Yeah. That's Who is that on the mic? If y'all would Nina, can you hear me? Yeah, turn off your, go ahead. I had to turn my I'm turn sorry. off that television um, and y'all can hear. Go ahead. Um it was a hadith on um I think it was I forgot his name. It was one of the companion was riding on the donkey in front of the Prophet Muhammad Sayyid Waslam. And so it was him and a donkey on a donkey and he rides in front of the prophet say watch Lama, and did not break the prayer okay that was ibn abbas that's a hadith but yes but i gave y'all some yeah not just the uh, the prophet uh, ibn abbas used to ride his donkey uh but uh uh between the people i mean in front of the people to and join the line that's dalil and there's about uh eight more i gave y'all hadith that y'all never heard of before from out of muslim and bukhari and Muata that clearly show where the prophet, where the companions clearly said, they don't break your prayer. This is what them checking it in my suit. Y'all, I still want y'all to do y'all homework. Do the homework. I gave y'all all those hadiths where the companions used to check it in my suit. And y'all didn't remember any of them. Except Sabrina, she remembered one. The hadith of Aisha that Aisha used to explain to Ibn Masood. Okay. All right. Let's get back to that tomorrow. I want y'all to do y'all homework. Let me put the PowerPoint up for today because today what I want to do is speak about things that are allowed to be uh, that for us to do during the prayer. And I want y'all to screenshot and take notes because your memories are not too good. First of all, I want to talk about, uh, answer the question that some of the young brothers ask about how to correct the imam during the prayer too. I'm going to cover that. First of all, the person who is uh, praying, say for example, you're making salat and your children come home from school and they give salams wanting to know if you are home or if anyone is home. A lot of sisters will ask me, Sister Layla, if I'm praying, I mean, I don't want the kids to think that they're in the house by themselves. So what do we do? Well, this is the answer. If you are making salat and somebody greets you, you may reply to them by making a gesture. That's what you would do. You would wait till the children come into the area where you are and then you can do this or something, or you're standing there praying, Allah, walk, bark, and wave at them or something. That's how you respond. But you have to wait till the kids come into the area. You don't want to yell out yet. You wait till the kids come and you can wave to them. And what is this based on? This is the hadith. 
Look at what a hadith looks like. Jabir said, this is how you know it's a hadith coming up. That the prophet said, that's how you know a hadith. Jabir said, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent me somewhere while he was going to the tribe of Mustalik. I approached him and he was praying while on the back of his camel. This was a voluntary prayer. Y'all remember that because the voluntary prayers can be prayed sitting. When I spoke to him, he and Zubair motioned with their hands. And I heard him reciting and saw him gesturing with his head. When he finished, he said, what have you done about the thing I sent you to get? He said, nothing kept me from talking to you except that I was praying. And that's why he didn't know the prophet was praying because he was sitting on that camel. That was a voluntary prayer. Okay. So you can gesture. Okay. Not just that, pay attention to these hadiths. We have another hadith. Ibn Umar tells us that Suhaib said, this is how you can recognize a hadith. When y'all see that the prophet was saying or doing something, that's a hadith. A fatwa is somebody else's talking, somebody else's opinion, explanation. This is the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Umar said that Suhaib said, I walked by the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while he was praying. And he, I, he, I greeted him and he responded by signaling, signaling with his finger, his hand. Ibn Umar said, the only thing that I know is that he said, he signaled to him with his finger. You know, like in other words, hold up, wait a minute, hold up. He praying. Hold up. <laughs> okay. It gets better. Pay attention to this hadith. That's one, two hadiths. Anas says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would signal while offering prayer. Now, this is a fatwa, but this is a fatwa from one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll take what Anas says over anybody that you know that's living on this planet today. Okay, Anas said, because he was with the prophet, he saw the prophet, he saw him pray, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his own eyes. Fatwa Islam Q&A ain't seen nothing. Okay, they don't know the prophet, they didn't meet the prophet. Y'all know the difference in the fatwa now? The men today did not meet the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas was part of his family. That's a hadith too. The hadith is uh, Dawood, Ahmed, and all of that. So when a person greets you, when you're praying and your kids greet you or come home or whatever, you can signal with your hand, your finger, or by nodding your head. Because these one, two, three hadiths are the dalil or the proof of that. You know, I'm making slot. Uh, somebody come in. This a nod, you know. So I like I'm, I'm nodding, acknowledging you. You get it? So that's how you respond, okay? When they come into the room, or whatever, <laughs> nod or whatever. Okay, everybody got that. Take a screenshot of these hadiths. Okay. Now, this is what we talked about the other day. This is what Sheikh Atli talked about the other day in the hadith he read, clapping is for women. What do you do? How do you alert the imam that he made a mistake? You're praying at the masjid. The imam, instead of prostrating, he stood up. Whenever a mistake happens during a prayer, the men say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, to get the Imam's attention. 
You women don't say anything. Instead, you can clap. You can clap to alert the imam. Or say, for example, your husband is leading you in a voluntary prayer at home. He makes a mistake. You clap. Okay? The, where's the Dalil? The prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said if someone is faced with something during the prayer, he should say, subhana Allah, that is for the men. He said, because clapping is for women, subhana Allah is for the men. The prophet was clear. He said it, clapping is for women. Subhana Allah is for the men, okay? If the imam forgets a verse, Say he's reciting uh, your children. You got your young son, your, uh, you say, Brother Yusef. Brother Yusef is leading his mother and sisters in prayer. Yusef forgot us a verse of the Fatiha. In that case, it is permissible to remind him of it. Okay? Regardless as to whether it's one of the, uh, 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 the pillar such as a Fatiha or a, 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 a another uh, surah. Okay, I want y'all to understand that. Clapping is for mistakes like forgetting to bow. It's not standing up. Any gesture. But when your son or your husband is leading you in prayer and he forgets a verse, he doesn't say that. Instead, he goes to Alhamdulillah. That's when you remind him verbally. Verbally. Verbally, you say, Okay, and where is the Dalil? Umar, Ibn Umar tells us that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed and had some confusion in his recitation. When he finished, he said to, to Ibn Umar, were, he said to Umar, were you present with us when I prayed? And Umar said, yes. So the prophet said, well, why didn't you correct me when I made a mistake? He got on Ibn Umar's father. Umar said, Umar, why didn't you correct me when I got confused in my recitation? So that can happen. Now, if it's a, a movement of the prayer that the person is forgetting or making a mistake in, if you a woman. But if it's the recitation, you can correct them verbally. Uh, no, Gairil Mahdubi alayhim wa Okay, you guys got it? And it doesn't have to be just a Fatiha. If he's reciting uh, the Eklas or something too and makes a mistake, you can correct him. That was a question that uh, one of the sisters I asked the other day. There's your answer. Take a screenshot of this hadith. I tell you, there is no question that you Muslims today can come up with about the prayer or anything else that has not already been asked by the during the prophet's time and answered. Because people are the same. People don't change when it comes to that type of stuff. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions have already answered these questions. Okay? Take a screenshot. What about sneezing? This is a question that Brother Marard asked the other day. What about sneezing? Can you respond to the sneezer? We have this hadith. This is a hadith, not a fatwa. By Rafi, Rifa. Ibn Rafi, he said, I prayed behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I sneezed. And I said, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Afterwards, when the prayer was over, the Prophet asked, who was the person that spoke when we were praying? Everybody got scared. They knew who it was, but they didn't want to tell on him. They thought he's going to get reprimanded. So the prophet asked again, who was it that said Alhamdulillah when I was praying, when we were praying? Then that's when uh, uh, the person said it was me. 
He said, oh, prophet of Allah. He said, uh, it was me. I sneezed. And the prophet said, alhamdulillah, by the one in whose hand is my soul, 30 something angels raced to write down what you said. So there's nothing wrong with that. So yes, there's your answer, Brother Marard. If you're sneezing, you know, you can you can uh, answer that. You can say, Alhamdulillah. Y'all see that? What about this? This is another question that uh, Brother M. Mod asked. What about when you prostrate or, or something and you want to fix your clothes? Ibn Abbas says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed in one garment and covered his face with a portion of it to protect himself from the heat or the coldness of the ground. So you can do that as, as long as you have a reason. So if you're going to prostrate and use your uh, hijab or, you know, your garment, to protect you from the ground. Remember, they prayed outside and also they didn't have carpet. This was the eighth century. The Arabs were poor people, okay? They didn't have carpet, They th their ground was the sand. So when they would prostrate, the prophet would protect, you know, sometimes you'd put this to protect you from the heat of the sand. The sand gets very hot. So if you're praying outside or something and you want to use something to protect you from the ground, then this is permissible as long as there's a need. Y'all see that? All right. Also, again, I want to emphasize that a person walking in front of you does not break the pray your prayer even if you had a sutra if you have a sutra the person cannot walk between you and it that hadith that Geechee was reciting is i remember i told y'all if you read the fusa it is talking about coming between between me and my sutra not in front of it that's the purpose my sutra is here walk in front of it don't come between it. You guys got that. Don't come between me and my sutra. But if they walk it in front of you, that's okay. And what, what is one of the hadiths that y'all couldn't remember that I tell you you are going to experience when you make hajj? When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made hajj and did his prayer right there uh, 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 in front of the Makam of Ibrahim, station of Ibrahim, the people were walking all in front of him. So what? He continued to pray. When you make Hajj, that's going to happen. Y'all couldn't remember any of those Hadiths I gave y'all. Y'all better do that homework tonight. So, and the prophet didn't have a sutra. So even with or without a sutra, they can walk in front of you. And women, I want y'all to know, women are human beings. We women are not impure. Just like you can kiss me when you want to. Hello, let's keep it real. I'm going to break these brothers of this nonsense. Hold on. I can't stand ignorance. You brothers are so hypocritical. Let me talk about it for a minute. I can't stand hypocrisy. Own what you say, brothers. You're going to say that if a woman walks in front of you, or if a woman touches you, your voodoo and prayer is broken, but you ain't got a problem kissing on me. You come home and you want to kiss me. I ain't breaking you. I mean, either own it or don't own it. If a woman is impure, then stay away from us. Don't touch us. Hello. Women are human beings. They're not dogs. Like Aisha said, we're not dogs. We're not donkeys. We are human beings with blood that runs through our vein like it runs through your narcissistic cystic body. Stop trying to make women less than a man. Stop trying to make women less than human. This was the dark ages. Remember the prophet came. I'm teaching y'all what happened with the stories of the prophet's wives. Islam came to a narcissistic world. Islam brought about manners took away that narcissism. It freed slaves. 
You're not superior over anyone because of your sex, your gender, your money, your wealth. And this was, is a, was an ongoing battle for the prophet to teach everybody that what only what differentiates us with Allah is our taqwa, not the money, not the, the gender. And Aisha was sick of that. You know, you men steal. The prophet came and, and reinforced over and over that we women are of value too. And you still want to be a narcissist and put us in a category of being inhuman. Brothers, if you think a woman is filthy and inhuman, then stay away from them. Okay? Come on, that hypocrisy. Don't no woman break anything, whether you touch me intentionally or not. The prophet Muhammad used to kiss his wives when he was fasting. And you don't have a problem doing that, brother man. You ain't got a problem bringing your behind home from work, kissing on your wife when you fasted. But now you're going to say if, she, if you go to pray and she walk in front of you, oh, the gin broke my prayer. Stop being a hypocrite. I can't stand ignorance. That's my problem, guys. That's the narcissism about me. I have no patience or tolerance for ignorance. You brothers that think that way, shame on you. And you women need to break your husbands out of that stupidity. Tell them if you, you if I break your prayer, then don't kiss me when you fast and doing Ramadan. And Ramadan, don't come home. And Ramadan, move into the mosque and just don't come home, period. That's how you break them out of that stupidity. All right. All right. So anyway, back to this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would pray and Aisha would be lying between him and the Qibla. When he performed the prostration, he would signal to her with his hand, she would move her legs. And when he stood, she would stretch out her leg again. Okay. Also, more proof about girls and women. Once the prophet was praying, two girls from the tribe of Abdul Muttalib were fighting behind him. Fighting. I told you they were a warrior race. <laughs> And what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He separated them. He reached behind him and, and separated the two little girls. He pulled them apart. And we have another version that says he they grabbed his knees when they were fighting and he separated them. These were little kids fighting, two little girls. So they grabbed his knees while he was praying and he just pulled them apart. Also, on another occasion, a boy came and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam motioned the boy to move back and he moved back. Then another girl tried to pass in front of him and he moved her back. By the way, who do y'all think these children are? These are the children of Sada and the other wives. I told y'all the Prophet had a big family. Yeah, he had a lot of stepchildren, Um Salama's children. Sardis children, and almost, almost all of his wives had children. So when you read these hadiths about the little boy, the little girl came, these are his children, his stepchildren. While he's praying, they would be fighting and he would separate them. He never hit them. You know, he reached behind him and pulled them apart. Those were probably oh, Sardis children. Because remember, as we talked about, Sardis children were very noisy Sada had six kids. They used to fight with each other all the time. Remember, that's one of the reasons why she was afraid to marry him. She said, I don't want to marry you. Oh, my children. My children are so bad. And, you know, well, the prophet taught him manners, you know, subhanAllah. So these hadiths were him, you know, with his children. Also, we have this hadith of Ali. He said that he would go and visit the prophet every night at a certain time. If the prophet was praying, he would clear his throat. You can do that. Say, for example, the children come into the room and they're arguing and you're praying. You can go <clears throat> <clears throat> to let them know you're praying because that's what the prophet did with Ali. If Ali entered and he was making salat, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would go <clears throat> clear his throat to let him know he was praying. 
Okay. So you can do that too with the kids. You know, the prophet was, you know, with the kids, the kids would come to run into the room. Oh me, oh me, oh me. He hit me. <coughs> you see that? Oh me, oh me, oh me. <coughs> so that's how you can get the attention of the person when you're praying to let them know, uh, uh, people that come into the room to let them know that you're praying. Okay. And I'm going to stop right here for today. This is enough information for y'all because I'm still disappointed that y'all can't remember none of those hadiths from yesterday. I am very disappointed. I took a lot of time putting all those hadiths together, going through different books, and you guys can't remember not one. The ones y'all remember, the ones I taught you 10 years ago. All right. So we're going to stop right there. And I hope this gives you the information that you need on what to do when the kids are interrupting you. Do